since it is the draft, and I'm kind of a sucker for this, <laughs> and I wanted to bring in our guy, of course, Armani and Edwards coming up two to four today. Braylon will be a part of it. And, you know, Braylon, I, I, first off, appreciate you coming in early. Not a problem. Yeah. yeah. Um, you got the Jets uh, sweatshirt on. Yeah, I wish the Jets would have drafted me. I mean, I, I can't take anything away from the Browns. I appreciate them for taking the chance, but D-Mac knows how it is to play for other franchises, but then when you find that home, and for me, the Jets is my home, so I wish I would have done all that, but I got a rep, man. Can he rides in the building. Can we start there, Neil, before yes. we talk about, obviously, we want to get into, you're the one who's experienced draft day and, and yeah. knows what these guys are having, but as a Jets alumni and your love for the Jets and stuff like this, finally the Aaron Rodgers deal that came down. As a former player, alumni, and his fan, what, is it, what does that mean for you, bro? Because people don't understand. As we, we live and sweat, even though we don't play anymore emotionally uh, with the culture and stuff like this. So what does Aaron Rodgers mean to you coming to the Jets? Crazy thing is I don't like Aaron Rodgers. I don't like his antics off the field. I don't like what he has done to Green Bay and just the little things and how he doesn't make friendships. But with that being said, when he got to the Jets, then it, it shifts. It, can, it changes because I'm a Jets heart, diehard at, at heart. A uh, team that brought me in, franchise that gave me a home, and we did some amazing things. So to watch him now be there. You look at that team last year, Nuru, D-Mac, if they were this close, if they would have had any semblance of a quarterback. So now you got Aaron Rodgers, and shoot, he's throwing passes already to Alan Lazard at the practice facility. When's the last time you've seen him throw a pass in the practice facility? In April. <laughs> So I think he's excited. I think it's new air. Sometimes you got to get out of a place and start over, whether it's your fault or not. You got to get out. I think he's excited. So it means everything. I think the Jets, why not? Why not? Why, why don't they have a chance this year? That defense was lights out last year to get Brees Hall back. Yeah, it's a lot of Im a lot of mirror images between that city and this city. I just think this city's in a much better position. All right, Braylon. Reason I reached out to you to set this up: number three overall pick, 2005 NFL Draft. Like. Everything that everybody goes crazy about. You were at the center yeah. of all of that. What, what's it like the day before the draft? What's it like right now, the day of the draft? Uh, you know, you get around lunchtime. It's getting ready to go down. T take me through all that, man. What are these guys dealing with? It's smooth up until the week of. Like, so getting from Rose Bowl's over with January 1st, I'm training for the combine, I'm out in Denver, I'm training, this is what everyone's doing, whether you're in Florida, whether you're in Miami, wherever you train at, you're getting ready for the process. You're hearing all the things, but you're not paying attention to them. In your mind, you're just like, look, I know I'm gonna be a lottery, I know I'm top five. It'll be somewhere in the top five, I'll be okay. You know, as it gets closer, you start to hear more things. You start to doubt yourself a little bit, like, dang, I wonder if that's... So, so, so you hear, like, yeah. when, you, when the scouts are Locked on there, in everything. and they're like, well, you know, I, I don't know about Braylon Edwards. Does 100. it translate? Is he just a guy that's bigger than everybody else in college, that he won't be bigger than everybody in the NFL? So yeah. you hear that. 100%. So anyone that says that they don't, they're full of they're shit. They're lying. They're full okay. of it. They're full of you-know-what. <laughs> yeah. And this is before the phones were so connected to social, to so connected to the internet and ESPN. This is, I had to go home and go to a hard top, or I had to go to a desktop and say, what's going on? What is, what is Ty, what is, and this is before Todd say. What is Kuyper saying? If Kuyper's telling the, the masses that he believes Mike Williams is a better receiver than me, that affects me because now I know the masses are listening. So I think it begins to be this roller Wrong. coaster. Well, I, I appreciate you, brother. <laughs> Number 10 to the Detroit Lions, no five. But it begins to be this roller coaster. But when you get there, when you get to that week, everything bothers you. Everything is nervous. Every little thing you heard, oh, man, I heard they like Will Levis and not me. Oh, shoot, I heard it's Bryce Young. It's not me. I heard that Anthony Richardson is the future. They're talking about what he can be. Everything you hear makes you nerve-wracking until they call your name. Take take us to the moment, B. Take it. Take us to the moment because obviously being, a, you know, be, being – uh, a top pick you know you're gonna go yeah right and you have all that anxiety but take me to the moment when you realize when cleveland and they started announcing because i can put myself i was in montreal forum yeah. with with my family sitting there and when they said in the second round 46 overall 46. right winger from the belleville bulls and i remember thinking to myself there's nobody yeah. else can be drafted that played right wing on my team. It's got to be me, right? So is it is it like that? And, and forget about, like, did you hear Cleveland Browns or did you hear your name? What was that initial? To me, it was like a, that electric shock through your body that of, I don't know, accomplishment. I had the same thing, scoring a few goals and punching a few people. But uh, <laughs> what was that pressure. feeling like when we watched these guys get selected and 
Go it's, up there. It's crazy because just listening to your story now, I'm instantly thinking about my story and I'm getting goosebumps thinking about how you must have felt because I remember how I felt. Mine was interesting because I was, I was slated to go two to the Miami Dolphins. That's all everybody heard. That's what they told us. We find out later that it's a ploy to get people to come up to number two, much like the Texans this year or the Cardinals this year. But I thought I was going to Miami. I went and bought a condo. Like, dumb stuff you do when you're young and about to have money. Not young and have money. Young and about, about to, to have, have money. money. Bought a condo. I bought a lot of pink, a lot of lim- linen. I wore all of that to uh, the Detroit Pistons, losing to the San Antonio Spurs. So at least I got to wear that somewhere. But on draft day, I'm thinking I'm going to the Dolphins. I'm sitting at the in the green room. Ronnie Brown is is a table over. Brought Charles Woodson sitting at the table with me. I got my family, so we're just rocking and rolling. We know the Miami Dolphins are gonna call, and then it doesn't happen after five minutes, and now it doesn't happen after ten minutes. And now I'm like, wow, what's going on? And then Ronnie Brown phones ring with two minutes left. I'm like, why is his phone ringing? Why isn't our phone ringing? Now I'm looking at my agent. Now I'm worried. Now, oh every, my God! Dude. Now, now, it, now it's like everything that you thought you heard. Where, well, I, I heard Braylon could go seven. Well, I heard he could go tenth to the Lions. Well, I heard he can go. Now all that really starts to play in my mind. I'm nervous as hell. I don't know what's going on. They call him. He walks out. He gets the uh, Miami Dolphins jersey. Uh, shakes uh, Pal Tagliabue's hand. Rest in peace. Now the Cleveland Browns are on the clock, and I haven't talked to the Cleveland Browns not one time, except for a hey, hello at the combine and at the uh, pro day. Damn. No extra meetings. And and then that clock ticks down. Roma Cannell calls the phone at like three minutes. And he says, well, Braylon, how you doing there? <laughs> Would you like to be a Cleveland Brown? I was like, look, I'd be anything at this point. And then the whole <laughs> shit. <laughs> That's how he talks. That's how, Rock- That's how Rack talks. But it's the electricity of your childhood. The electricity of the dream that was to play in the NHL for you, that was to play in the NFL for me, you know, the dream to be like my pops who got drafted in the third round, all that goes into your mind, like once Paul Tagliabue starts. And with the third pick, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it right now. It's like this electricity ride of all the in the backyard, and it's five seconds left on the clock. Steve Young throws it up to Jerry Rice. That was my backyard childhood, so it was, to this day, man, I get choked up thinking about it. So you yeah. knew, because the phone call came in before yeah. the nation knew. So you. So already, I got. To, I knew before the. So uh, before the pick. you got, yeah. did you go to get the jersey? And I did. I got pictures. I went up there. I had the most people ever on stage back at that time. It was like I had twenty five people on stage. So you invented the entourage. I did. I'm All from right. Detroit. You invented the entourage. Man, you know how many people from Detroit were better than me that didn't make it. You know how many stories I saw like that. So one of the big things for me was bringing everybody from Detroit that had a part to do it, whether it was my football coach, whether it was my you know, my uncles, my grandmothers, my little brothers, my cousins. I want to bring everybody from the city with me, so we would be.